Did you know there are monsters that come out at night in Mondstadt? Is that not the law of the God of Contracts in Liyue? I will have order! Do not judge a death die by your mortal ideals. Cry! The night of Leah. Over. Now that you know the secrets of the night, would you accompany me to work overtime? and pigs. I guess that could have been them. And there was a child staggering in front of them. This is I, Aztaha, forged of elemental crystal. The enraged earth will not absolve you! Stand upon your tomb! Quake! There is a fine line between good and evil. This is order! It was humanity that attacked the ley lines that sustained me! So here lies the wisdom of the gods! To dust! Hey, wait a minute. Does this count as martial arts? Ready for trial! Incinerate! Breath of the Flame! Inadmissible evidence! Well, I guess I've mastered both the pen and the sword. People tell me that if I just spoke more softly, others may find it easier to forgive me. But the only reason they think that way is because they've never been branded a pariah before. I condemn you! Freeze to the core! Eye for an eye! Vengeance will be mine! This serenity pot is all yours now. You needn't worry about that. I've already arranged for a certain little helper to await you within this teapot. She will explain everything you need to know about it.
You want to learn some Favonia's blade work? <laughs> all right, then. I'll teach you. Oh, yes. I'll teach you all right. Mark my words. Need a cure for insomnia? Huh. Let me read you the history of the development of Liwe's legal system. None of my friends have ever lasted longer than 20 minutes. Okay, to elaborate, <laughs> Yen Fei will be featured in Zhang Li's event wish, Gentry of Hermitage. The exact dates and durations for the event wishes will be officially announced later. Sets of new Sorry. artifacts for players to collect. Tenacity of the Millilith and Pale Flame. Ooh, awesome! Where can we get That's them? Correct. The new domain, Ridge Watch, will be available to travelers after the version update. Now, it's located in the mountainous area that connects Mondstadt and Liyue. Finally! We're getting a teleport waypoint there. That's always been one of the harder areas for players to reach. Yeah, I bet a lot of people have used their portable waypoints to get there. Now we can save those for some other places. <laughs> In addition to the new gear, some new storylines will be released too. After the version 1.5 update, Diona's Hangout event and Act 2 of Noelle's Hangout event will be available for players to enjoy. Ooh. Act 2 of Zhang Li's story quest will be released in the update as well, followed by Yula's own story quest. Wow. Serena Teapot. I like the name. So, is this Serena Teapot sort of like Madame Ping's magical teapot? Yeah, it's what's known as a realm within. Ooh, it sounds exciting. 
That was really nice of them. I hope it wasn't too difficult to make. Well, the Adepti of Liu are mighty illuminated beings with great power. <laughs> Let's take a closer look inside this so-called teapot. For starters, there are three different realm layouts for us to choose from. Floating Abode, Emerald Peak, and Cool Isle. <laughs> Inside the realm, you'll find Tubby, a teapot spirit who manages all the general affairs in the realm within. Oh, just like a butler. Oh my gosh, Tubby is so round and cute! I love it! And it plays an important role in our realm, too. When we raise its trust rank, it will give us some rewards and unlock new features for our realm. <laughs> Whenever we create new furnishings, Tubby's trust increases. Moreover, with the help of the teapot spirit, we'll collect various blueprints from different sources. Once we've collected the necessary materials for creating furnishings, we can make those furnishings in the Serena teapot and use them to decorate our home. Of course, we can also buy some furnishings directly from Tubby. That's wrong Good. because... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? You do you. You do you. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Short of any practical decoration ideas, we can also apply to enter our friends' realms for some inspiration. We can just stop by for a visit and snap some nice photos. Ooh, that means we can throw parties in our personal realms. That'll be so fun. Are you going to put me on your ultra-exclusive guest list, Zach? <laughs> nope. Zach! <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> you know, we're going from roughing it in the wild to luxurious house parties. I'm really excited for this one. Yeah, we can create views outside the house and arrange the layouts of furnishings. And as we put more furnishings into the Serena teapot, our adeptal energy increases, enabling the realm to produce more realm currency. That's right. We can exchange realm currency for a variety of materials and rewards. And sometimes a teapot traveling salesman carrying realm treasures might appear. So be sure to check it out. Noted. list is an event called Energy Amplifier Initiation. In this event, a Sumeru researcher will ask us to gather Irminsul fruit fragments. For a time, we'll be entrusted with a mysterious ancient relic, the Energy Amplifier. With this relic, we can unleash the power of the fragments we collect. During the event, this Energy Amplifier will grant us some effects in combat. So it really is literally amplifying our abilities. Speaking of ancient relics, I feel like Mr. Zhongli would know something about that. Mm hmm What are you looking at me for? You know I'm not really Zhongli, right? Oh. But I do <laughs> happen to have some insight on the energy amplifier. For one, there are variations of how you can configure the fragments into the energy amplifier. One variable, motive force, affects how many fragments one can configure. The higher the sum of your character's levels, the higher motive force you can provide to the energy amplifier. With higher motive force, players will be able to equip more high-quality fragments to strengthen their team. What if I don't have enough characters at higher levels? As always, Zach, that's where your friends come in. You can borrow up to three characters from your friends to increase your motive force. You got that, Zach? Oh, friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got it. <laughs> uh, so the question then is, how do we gather all the fragments? There are plenty of fragments spread all over the map. We'll search for the fragments in places of interest throughout the open world. But it won't be easy to get treasures as powerful as Irminsul fruit fragments. Now, players will have to get rid of any trouble circling around the fragments before they're able to collect them. Ah, that makes sense. And we'll also be able to enter something called a Twisted Realm in the later phase of the event. Twisted Realm? Sounds like a teapot gone wrong. <laughs> Not exactly. There are four domains in the Twisted Realm, and each has different bizarre twists. We'll be able to select the difficulty and conditions for the domains we enter, just as in the previous Hypostatic Symphony event. Of course, higher difficulties will grant better rewards. Okay, so this'll be one for players who are looking for some serious challenges. And I should mention that a contract with Diona, the bartender of Mondstadt, will be one of the various rewards from the event shop. Cool. It sounds like we can add her to our team by participating in all kinds of activities from the event. That's right! Go get her! Our next event to introduce is called Battlefront Misty Dungeon. Huh? This sounds like a completely different kind of game. In this event, there will be six themed trials for us to complete, 
and will only be able to use characters from a set pool of trial characters from the event. Throughout the trials, our team will not form any elemental resonance, and food and potions in our inventory will also not be accessible. Ah, now that sounds tough. <laughs> but before each trial, we can preview the monsters we'll be encountering, along with some corresponding tips and tasks. So, it is possible for us to choose characters that fit the conditions before we start. Nice, right? Yeah, that's a relief. Whew. So, what do we need to do to pass these trials? In each trial, players need to activate all three of the ancient runes within the time limit to gain access to the final challenge. There are benediction mechanics with the trials, which allow players to obtain certain bonus effects and make it easier to complete the trials. At the same time, there are also some automated weapon systems that will detect and attack any intruders. Players will need to use the appropriate reactions to temporarily disable these devices. We're definitely going to have to use our heads to get the right strategies. Totally! And with rewards like Primo Gems, Mora, and other materials awaiting, it'll definitely be worth a shot! Primo Gems? Oh, I'm in! Our next event is called Mimi Tomo. Sounds... Hillichurlian? You nailed it! This event is about a certain unusual hilly churl we might encounter in various locations. I see! The one that throws Primo Gems at players, right? Okay, to viewers who are searching for where you can find this unusual hilly churl right now, just know you can't actually use the Primo Gems it throws at you. Lately, this unusual hilly churl has been stirring up trouble on the merchant routes. It's time for us to teach it a lesson. But this hilly churl is not an easy one to trace. So, we'll need to borrow some help from an expert. Perhaps you remember the hilly churlian expert, Ella Musk? Yeah, you mean that little girl in the library? So it's time for her to teach us a lesson. <laughs> yeah, we'll be utilizing the handy handbook of Hilly Churlian from her to communicate with other Hilly Churls for intel on the whereabouts of this unusual Hilly Churl. That seems like fun, but I'm not sure I can memorize that much Hilly Churlian. You can write it down, Zach. Or you can take a screenshot. Oh, yeah, a screenshot. Now that's good advice. The only question now is, how reliable is this handy handbook of Hilly Churlian? After all, it has a disclaimer on its title page saying it cannot be held responsible for any consequences of its use. Wait, so you're saying it could potentially do more harm than good? If that's the case, we'll have to persuade the Hilly Churls by physical means. Ooh, now that's what I'm talking about. It could be quite persuasive that way. That wouldn't be persuasion! Wait. Now I'm confused. We're talking about bribing them with some apples or something, right? Like that type of persuasion? Oh, apples. Yeah, yeah apples. <laughs> and now you're making me feel like I'm a bad person. <laughs> anyway, players will gain some furnishing blueprints, primo gems, and other rewards from the event. So be sure not to miss out on this one. Our next event is simply called Wind Trace. Personally, I would like to call it Hide and Seek. All right, sounds fun. And in case you're wondering, Wind Trace actually originates from when ancient nobles were hunting for rebels in Mondstadt. Uh, okay. Now things are starting to sound a little bit scary. <laughs> no worries, Zach. Today it's transcended from its dark history, passing down only the names of the two sides, Hunter and Rebels. Oh, so what does a round of Wind Trace look like? I'm glad you asked, Zach. Players will be playing in contested zones. They will be allocated one of the two sides, the hunter or the rebels. The rebels hide and the hunter seeks. But there's more to it than just that. The rebels can use their windward arts to disguise themselves, place bait, or temporarily enter a hidden state. All right, sounds interesting. How about the hunter? What can they do? The hunter can use various arts to detect the location of the rebels and disable their tricks and disguises. So, the two sides are really going at it then. <laughs> yeah, and during the game, favors will descend upon the area at random, and both sides can pick up these favors to help charge up their own so-called secret favor. There are five contested zones in the open world, so those who are familiar with all the areas and terrain will have some advantages. Good news for those treasure chest hunters out there. <laughs> yeah. Players will obtain Wind Trace coins from the event and unlock a variety of rewards, including a Wind Trace themed name card. But if you play the game in co op mode with your friends, or if you've already reached the daily limit of obtainable Wind Trace coins, then you won't be able to gain any more. Ah, I see. 
I hope you'll all enjoy this little game. Our final event is called Overflowing Mastery. Hmm, we had Leyline Overflow before, right? That's right. Only this time, we will have doubled talent level up materials. During the event, we will have three chances daily to collect double rewards using original resin from selected domains of mastery. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first time we'll have an event that doubles talent level up materials. That's huge. Exactly. So if you need to grind for talent level up materials, this will be your chance. I bet everybody's gonna love that. All right, that's about all we have for the special events in version 1.5. As always, the last part of our version previews will be regarding new optimizations and adjustments coming to the game. Keith, would you like to explain the coming changes for version 1.5 to our viewers? Sure thing! Starting from version 1.5, the cost of original resin to claim rewards for the first three weekly bosses will be reduced from 60 to 30. Okay, that's half the cost. Yeah! And we'll have a total of four weekly bosses, so that means we'll be able to claim rewards from all the weekly bosses using a single day's resin. And we'll even have ten original resin left over. Oh, check you out, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next, after the version update, character companionship experience gained while playing in-team with other players in co-op mode will be doubled. So, if we want to accelerate our friendship with some characters and learn more about their stories, we can defeat bosses or clear domains with other players in co-op mode. Oh yes! No need to remind me on the importance of friends again. Oh, sorry, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> need some more of those. The third optimization will be about mailing alerts for when events are ending. After the version update, Genshin Impact will send mail alerts to players before any limited time events end. Yeah, considering all the unique gameplay and loads of rewards from those limited time events, it would be a pity to miss them. Definitely. For players who are too busy to check the end time of each event, the mail alert will for sure come in handy. Yeah, absolutely. Our last optimization, coming in version 1.5, will be about slimming down the game's overall size. Oh, that sounds kind of cool. With this optimization, players can manage the voiceover files they've installed. If you no longer want to keep the audio files for a certain language, you can delete the corresponding voiceover files manually. And that audio pack will not update in future version updates. I imagine that could save quite a bit of space. I know audio files can be massive. Aww, but what if they decide to delete the English voiceovers? No, don't delete us, please! Don't... Are you still there? Yes! I was hoping you'd still be there because we have an extra special surprise for you. Check this out. <laughs>